Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. We're talking about how to win when the storms of life come. Folks, I'm telling you, if you you haven't had the storms of life, they're coming. That's a negative confession. That's a fact. I said, that's a fact. You know, to try to think that you're not going to ever have any trouble with the devil, just, just sticking your head in the sand like an ostrich and singing, drop kick me Satan through the goalpost of life. You are going to have trouble with the devil. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. You're still going to have it. Just say he overcame. That means at the end, we win. And when the storms come, we win. And if you'll do the right things, you'll always win. Everybody say, always win. Nobody wants to lose. Anybody want to lose? No, I didn't think so. Everybody wants to win. Luke 6, 39. He spake a parable unto them. Let me, let me just jump down. I read that you know, earlier, and, and that's all good, but really, I really need to start in verse 46. Um, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which, uh, which I say? Now, let me tell you something, folks. These people who run around telling you, you, you know, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to say what the Bible says. You don't have to act like Jesus says that. You can just live like you want to live. The blessings of God are going to come on you because you're under grace. Jesus said, why are you calling me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I told you to do? Amen. Jesus told us to do some stuff. The Word tells us to do things. Well, you're supposed to do them. All right? Whoso cometh to me and heareth my sayings and... You might want to underline this one. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, you might want to underline cometh to me. Underline heareth my sayings. And number three, double underline doeth them. Amen. I said doeth them. Amen. Now what's doeth? Doeth is King Jimmy for do. All right? You got to do it. Everybody say got to do it. All right, hallelujah. He, he that cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man that built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not. Everybody's done the line, doeth not three times. Under that three times. Doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against it which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. And the ruin of that house was great. Now notice three things are here. Number one, you got to come to Jesus. The source to your wisdom and the source to your answers is Jesus. And Jesus is the word. He is the Logos. So we can, we can accurately say you got to come to the word. The word has your answer. They say the word has my answer. To hear it, these sayings of mine. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to hear what the Bible says. You don't need Madame Lorraine's financial advice. Now, down in Eastern Carolina, you used to have a lady get on the radio and she, was, she would advertise. Go see Madame Lorraine and her rundown shanty. Four cars in the front yard on cinder blocks with no tires. Engine gone. Dogs running in and out of the cars. And she's going to give you financial advice. Sounds like she needs to listen to herself. Amen? You got that palm up there with the little thing in the middle. Financial advisor. And you look up there and think, my God. I mean, you know, by the fruit, you can just look at the fruit and figure out she don't know what she's talking about. And people will go pay her to tell them how to get messed up. No, your answers come from the Word. Jesus is the answer. Jesus has the answers. The Word of God is where you go. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, not my bad and low rain. All right? Hallelujah. If you haven't been down in Eastern Carolina, you probably hadn't heard of her. I heard of her my whole life because she she put the advertisement on the radio. Come see Madam Lorraine. All right. Thirdly, you got to do it. But be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only what deceiving your own selves the book of James tells us that it says if you don't if you hear the word and you don't do the word you're deceiving yourself we got 
a whole new generation in the church. They've been deceived. It started out with something, a mantra referred to as seeker sensitive. The churches started making their thing, you know, very palatable for the people coming into the building. You know, didn't want to offend anybody. Didn't want to talk about sin. Didn't want to say that sinning was unrighteous activity. Didn't want to tell people they, they needed to tithe or to give. Didn't, say, didn't want to tell them they couldn't live in fornication and adultery. Didn't want to say that, you know, you're to come in and be a part of the church or the work of the church. Didn't, don't, no, we don't want to say any of that because it make them feel bad. We don't want to make them feel bad. No, you don't want to make them feel bad because you want their back end in the seat and you want them to slip some money into the offering because they feel so good about what's going on there. We don't want to make them feel good. We'll make them feel Listen, do you know my calling is not to make you feel good? No man, no preacher, your calling is not to make people feel good. Your calling is to preach the truth in love so that they mature and grow up in Christ and put on Christ. Let me tell you something now. You, when you walk in Christ, the more you walk in him, the better you'll feel. <clears throat> but you're not going to feel good because I tell you, if nothing's wrong, you don't have to go to church, you don't have to tithe, you don't have to give, you don't have to obey, you don't have to submit. As a matter of fact, live any way you want to because you're under grace. Just send me your offering this week. Buy my book on how to live in sin and feel good about it. Hello? No, Jesus said that you got to hear these sayings of mine and do them. Or else the storms are going to knock your house off this blocks. Amen. Amen. Now we could go out here next week. We could hire two contractors. We could hire one contractor to build and give them the, both the exact same floor plan. But tell the first, the, the, the second guy after he starts building, say, now look, don't build a foundation. Just build it right on top of the ground. I can't do that. No, you know, uh, I, I, look, I'm paying you. I want you to do it this way. I don't want any foundation. I just want, right, I want right on top of the ground. I want it up in a hurry. I want the house built quick. While the other guy's building, you know, he's going out there and he's just putting brick on top of the ground and he's, you know, and now he's got, he's getting the, you know, the floor joist in. Now he's building the walls up and putting the roof on and all this kind. Boy, it's going up in a hurry. It looks pretty. And the next guy, by this time, this guy's probably three fourths done. He's still in the ground because they're digging down in the ground. And they're they're big. They're digging holes twenty inches wide, twenty inches deep. And if the soil content's not right, they're putting in rebar, and they're getting all the rebar in there, and they're putting the, the, the footers out into the middle, you know, where the, where the, where the uh, center joist uh, land on it and uh, support land on it, and they're pouring concrete in there, and it's got to sit for a certain period of time and cure out before you can start building on because it, it's got to get right or it'll crack, it'll settle too much, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But finally, after several months, both houses are complete. Well, they did it in dry season. There was no rain. Then the storms came. And there was a flood. Came in and just washed the first house away. Why? It wasn't built on, there was no foundation to it. But the other guy had dug down and got it footers in there and got it down on bedrock. That house still standing. Why? Because you've got to dig deep in life. You've got to come to Jesus, hear and do. You've got to dig down and build your life on the rock of Jesus Christ, on the rock of his word. He is the chief cornerstone. How do, you know, we live on the, on the foundation by the apostles and prophets, but Jesus is the chief cornerstone. We come to him. We hear what he says, and we do it. You We'll look over James. I don't want to say you're a fool, but you are foolish. That all right? Say it that way. You are foolish if you think. That you can live. Hallelujah. Verse 21, 22 of James chapter 1 says, but, ye, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a doer of the word, I mean, any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholdeth himself, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he, he was. 
But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. This man, everybody say this man, shall be blessed in his deed. Which man? Oh, no, you can lay down. You're under grace. You can do whatever you want to. It doesn't matter. You just lay down. It doesn't mean that you'll get blessed. No. The word says, I don't care what skinny, drink, skinny jean preacher says. I really don't care. If he's not saying what the word says, all his skinny jeans does is give him two octaves higher in his voice. All right? We got people believing that because they're under grace, they can lay down and do nothing. But the word says that we are to look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein and be a doer. Everybody say be a doer. Be a doer. You got to do the word. I said you've got to do the word. I don't go to church. Why? I don't believe I got to. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of some. Well, I'm under grace. I don't have to go. Well, see, you're not being a doer of the word. Folks, I am telling you, unless you're a doer of the word, you're not going to be blessed. To believe that you will be blessed by not just being a hearer is erroneous because the word of God's already told you that the man that gets blessed is the man that does the word. Just grin. Say glory to God, Pastor. That's good. Go ahead on and preach to me. Go ahead on and step on my toes a little bit longer. Go ahead on and make me scream in pain over the fact you're stepping on my toes, but I'm going to get it straight. Come on now. Or bobblehead it. All right? I got the pastor at bobblehead on my desk. I'll go ahead and let bobblehead from me. Amen. No, James makes it very clear. Now, Jesus said, he that comes to me, heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I'll liken him to the man who did what? He dug deep. He built his house on the rock. The flood came. Notice in the second one here, in this particular parable, it didn't say the flood even came. The stream just beat vehemently upon it. It doesn't take a lot to knock you over when you're not built on the word. But when you're built on the word, the worst can come and you'll stand. I said the worst will come and you'll stand. The worst will come and you'll be victorious. Amen. So Jesus said you got to come, you got to hear, you got to do. Can you say amen? You got to dig deep. Everybody say, I got to dig deep. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Ephesians 2, 20 through 22 tells us that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Glory. We're built on the rock. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to establish ourselves by digging deep. Now, look. Look over into Mark's gospel. We're going to talk about the parable of the sower, which goes in line with this. Mark 4. Do you understand the imperativeness of digging deep? Now, when I was out in Tulsa, uh, some of you have been to Tulsa and been downtown Tulsa, and there's a building down there, or a couple of buildings down there called the Williams Center. Now, they were constructing the Williams Center when I was living out there. All right? Now, the whole time I was out there, there was just a big hole in the ground. I mean, I'm out there, I drive there, you know, they're building the wilderness city. Really? Go down and see how, what the progress was. You can't see the progress. Why? They're below the street. The entire time I was out there, you couldn't see anything they'd done. There's just a big hole in the ground. Why? Because they had to dig deep to build the building up. They had to go down to come up. They had to get into the earth to go up. And so uh, a couple years later, I went back out there, went down to a camp meeting, some, you know, one of the camp meetings in, in downtown Tulsa for Brother Hagen, and went down there and rode by the Williams Center, and there it was. I don't know, it was 15, 20 stories, whatever it is up there. I don't know how tall it is, but I'm going to tell you what, the whole time I was there, I never saw it come above the ground. It was all below ground. They were digging deep. They were going down into the earth. They were setting pylons. They were setting things into the bedrock. They were getting the foundation sure. Why? Because if you don't get that foundation right and something shows up, it'll tear it down. I mean, they've been having earthquakes in Oklahoma. They didn't have earthquakes when I was out there. They've been having them out there the past few years. Earthquakes out there. If that thing ain't built right, it'll, it could come down. Amen. How, 50, how many? 52. It's 52 stories? Oh, okay. There you go. 52 stories. Wow, I didn't realize it was 52 stories. There's somebody who went so deep. They go way down to the earth. And I'll tell you, I drive by there, and they, you see all you hear, brrr, concrete trucks. You never saw what they were doing. You couldn't get up there to see what they were doing because they were so deep in the earth. And let me tell you something, folks. 
There's a lot of times in your walk. I will get to Mark 4. Don't, don't think I forgot it. There's a lot of times in your life you'll think people are moving ahead and people are getting to places and people are doing great things and they look all shiny star. I wonder who you are. You know, shiny star. I wonder who you are. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Jeff. Keep it going now. All right. Amen. And it looks like, oh, look at, look at them. They, they, they're, they're out there, and they're, they're doing all this, you know, and they've got all this stuff going on in their life, and then, oh, they're just great for God. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people in their Christian walk and in their ministries build their house on the earth and don't dig deep. And let me tell you what happens when that happens. Eventually, the storm's going to come. And eventually, it's going to knock their feet where their head was two seconds before. And eventually, their building is going to come down. But I can tell you, if you'll take the time to build it on the... Look, folks, ministers, you ministers, let me tell you something here. If you don't get your stuff on the rock, you're going to get run over and pile drive right into the ground. And you won't make it. I said, I know people. I know people. Came out of rainbow, oh, I'm pastoring. I got a traveling ministry. I got this, I got that, I got this. Blah, blah, blah. And, I, and what are you doing? Uh, I, I pour water for the guest speaker. I just didn't tell him the guest speaker was Lester Summerall. Buddy Harrison. Amen. I mean, about, about every, Dennis Burke. You can about name any, any guy by just about back then that was going through the charismatic word of faith circles and they were coming to our church. Ed Dufresne, that's where I got Ed Dufresne uh, there. Different ministries, all kinds of different ministries coming through. We, we, I pour water in the back room. I stand outside the door and make sure when it goes in there. Well, I got Church of 80. I got this. I got, I'm traveling. I got, six, I got 65 engagements in the next three months. I mean, you know, I'm just loaded up. Hallelujah. And all the people I know, all the people I know that were saying those things back then, I don't know where they are. I don't hear anything about them. And there's a lot of people I know from, from my time who went out and did what I did. They work, they build their ministry deep, they dug deep for their ministry, they dug deep into the bedrock, and I'm, I'm telling you, I know these guys, they're still in the ministry today. And they're doing well, and they're successful, and they're blessed, because they wouldn't quit. They, 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 you got to have, you got to dig deep to be ready, so when stuff comes, you're not going to quit. Now that's ministry, I'm telling you, in Christian walk, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, you got to dig down. You just can't come into this thing, well, I got saved, I'm going to heaven, glory! And run off to the, to the hyper prosperity seminar that if you'll give to the band with a thousand fold anointing, you'll be rich tomorrow. You won't have any debt. Now, the Bible tells us to bring the tithe and offering into the storehouse and prove him. Amen. And it, it, things come line upon line and precept to precept, precept here, here a little and there a little. God works. You know, a lot of people who are hollering, I got supernaturally debt counseled it's because they've been given for 40 years, not for four days. Hello? They went out to some prosperity seminar. In four days, they're going to be debt-free tomorrow. Because they gave to the higher anointing. Hogwash. You got to dig deep. You got to be faithful with your money when you don't want to be faithful with your money. You got you to tithe when you just don't believe it. You, can't, you can't, can't even think about doing it. You got to be faithful. Those, you got to be faithful to do the word when it's not easy to do the word. You see, that work's called digging deep. That's getting down to the bedrock. How many drive across the interstate overpasses and bridges? How many expect them to fall? You expect them to fall? Well, you better change your expectancy. Or don't ride with me. I don't believe they're going to fall. You know why I don't believe they're going to fall? Because I watch them build bridges. And they got this big crane thing out there that's got a pile driver in it. And got big old huge eye beams. And they're going, chakoom, chakoom, chakoom. And when it gets down above the ground, they weld another one on the top of it. Same length. And go, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. And they drive that thing down into the bedrock where they can't drive it any further. That concrete pylon doesn't go all, that, that's just kind of, you know, that, that's there, but it's not all the way down. And then they come out and weld rebar to all that and pour concrete around it. But if that, that concrete, if that concrete was what you were depending on, you're in trouble. It's part of it, 
But there is a beam that goes all the way down in the bedrock on each pylon of a, bri of, of a bridge or overpass. And it's driven into that bedrock. Why? Because it cannot handle the constant weight and shuddering of the vehicles going across it and all that stuff without being in bedrock. If they just went on there, put one eye beam down and got pretty deep into the dirt, it would hold for a season. But over time, it would shift. And eventually, it would crack and collapse. Your life is the same thing. A lot of times people are taking shortcuts because they don't want to get into the Word. They don't want to do the Word. They want somebody to preach them some happy, clapping message about you don't have to do anything and you're still going to get blessed and everything looks good and everything on the outside looks beautiful and everything on the outside looks just like the house that built it on the rock until the storm shows up. And if you don't get it right before the storm shows up, you ain't going to be able to fix it after the storm shows up. You're going to have you a uh, uh, D.H. Griffin's going to be out at your property picking up the leftovers and putting it in the back of a tractor trailer and hauling it off. Are you here? That is why Jesus said that the man who cometh to me and heareth these sayings and doeth them, I will liken him to this. And then he, he finished it off by saying this. This man, everybody say this man is blessed. This man is blessed. What about the other man? He ain't blessed. I don't care what he's under. I don't care what message somebody says he's under. I am telling you, if you do not come to Jesus, if you do not hear the word, and you do not do the word, you will not be blessed. And it's not because God's withholding from you. There are principles that cause the blessings to come. Amen. Amen. Now, if you go to build your house without putting the foundation in and the building inspector catches you, he's going to make you stop. Why? Because it's not safe for habitation. You'd have, to do it, you'd have to do it without getting a building permit. Here's your building permit, folks. You've got to follow the code. You've got to do the code, and you'll be blessed. Now, if you go to California and you live in, you live in a, which is pretty much all of California, on a fault line, you've got to build your structures differently because they've got to be able to withstand the, the shaking. Amen? People now are starting to build out in Oklahoma and in, in, in what Tornado Alley area, they're starting to build safe rooms. Why? So when the storm comes, they can get, the, they can get in that safe room and, 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 not, and not die. They can live. They're designed to withstand winds up 200, 200, 250 miles an hour. You know, put the whole family in, shut the door, boom. You know, the whole house can blow away, but you're still safe. We must learn to be doers of the word and not only hearers. If you want to live victoriously. How many want to live victoriously? Who wants to live defeated? Didn't think so. See, this is the thing. People come with enticing words and entice people into believing they can get what Jesus said you couldn't get. Hello? Unless you were a doer. They teach people you can get it without being a doer when Jesus said you can't get it without being a doer. That's enticing words. Well, isn't it enticing? Let me ask you something. Is it, let me this statement. Is this enticing? Um, you're born in America. You've got a right to health care. You've got a right to... Uh, to money every month to live off of. You've got a right to a retirement. You've got a right to never do a thing in your life and still get anything you want. Now listen, folks, is that not enticing? I said, is that not enticing? Man, I don't have to work. I don't have to do anything. I just, I, I don't, now I don't even have to go pick up the thing in the mail. I mean, at the bank or whatever, they mail it to my house. As a matter of fact, now I got the card. They put it on my card. I'm not trying to talk about anybody. I'm talking about the lie that people present to people that is enticing, that you're never going to have to do anything to earn the money and to earn all the things that, that the government's going to give you. That is enticing. It entices people. There are people out there right now. Well, if I go get a job, I'll make less than I am, you know, uh, I'll make less by working than I would be by not working, so I'm not going to work. Why would I work? And, you know, let me tell you, something, that's enticing. I can stay home and make this. I can go to work and make that. I'll stay home. 
You got people working for the for the car companies and the unions up in the mid up in the uh, upper Midwest. Now this isn't government. This is unions. They've got a pool of twenty thousand or so employees who make full salary. They say it costs them more to train them. So when somebody retires, they come back to work. However, they don't. They they can offer them a job, and if it's more than an hour away, they don't have to take it. So if they're living in one city and there's another job an hour and 30 minutes away that they could move to and make the money and earn the money, not, they don't have to take it. They can stay right at home and keep getting it for free. Is that not enticing? So all these people have another business, run their business, and refuse to take the jobs and keep getting full salary. We wonder why, I wonder why your you know, $12,400 car costs $45,000. It's enticing. See, now the church has bought into some of that mantra, and we're enticing people with that worldly mindset. That's a worldly mindset, by the way, folks. It's not a godly mindset. It's a worldly mindset. The worldly mindset's infiltrated the church, and now we're being told you're going to get blessed no matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you're a sin. It doesn't matter if you're rebelling against God. It doesn't matter if you ever give or not. You're going to get financially blessed. Blessing is going to come on you. You are the, now, that, is that, that's enticing. What enticing words do? Well, Paul said this. He said, I came not to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. What do enticing words do? They deceive. Because they tell you opposite of what Jesus said. They tell you you can be a hearer only and still get blessed. But Jesus said, you got to be a hearer and you got to be a doer to get the blessings. Everybody go, ouch. Somebody give me a help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Come on now. I need a help me, Lord, out there somewhere. All right. So we come to him. Paul wrote in um, Colossians chapter 2, Verse 8, he said, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men at the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Now, you, Alex, I, I do a lot of side stuff, building stuff. I'm telling you, people, people oh, you don't need to do all that. Well, you better. Hello? You better reinforce that. You better build it right. You better construct that right. If you take a shortcut on this, I mean... My, my wife wanted me to say, hey, you, ought to do some, you, know, you ought to go out and start doing sod. I said, honey, I'm not bonded. If I go in somebody's house and I do something and, hit a, and a nail hits an electrical wire or whatever, and I'm not bonded and insured, and, the, and it, it burns the house down, they can sue me. You know? And I, and I, I got no, nothing to fall back on, you know? I'm serious, you know? Now, I'm, I'll do some small stuff for people I know and, you know, and say, hey, look, here's, in the, you know, but, but just go out here and start doing the general public. That's, that's a lot to that one now. Because you know, there's some, some crazy people out there. You know, didn't, didn't even get near electricity. You burnt my house down. How, you, how did that burn your house down? You know. But we got to be doers of the word. We can't be just walking around here going, the Lord loves me. I, he loves me. I'm under the agape of God. Oh, Brother Jeff. And he's going to bless me no matter what I do. It don't matter what I do. I I'm selling dope and shooting heroin and running around with women, getting drunk, and the Lord don't care because I'm going to still be blessed. Well, you're going to have to repent and then start doing the word. Amen. The man that does the word is blessed in his deed. And don't let people spoil you. Let me, there are preachers out there who will tell you what you want to hear to entice us, just like the politicians. They'll tell you what they want you want to hear to get your vote. Because it empowers them. There are preachers that will tell you what you want to hear to get your money. Because it empowers them. They don't care about your spiritual life. They don't care about the consequences of you not doing the word. They don't care. All they care about is getting your money. Hello. Can you say amen? amen. All right. I'm about ready to quit. How am I going to quit here? I'm not going to get to Mark 4. I'm going to get to Mark 4 next week. How about that? How about if we get to Mark 4 next week? I, I know y'all got Mother's Day plans and all this kind of stuff. But, but people, it's so important. It's so, so vitally important that we stop messing around thinking that things happen when the Word of God says they won't happen. 
But somebody writes a book. They get popular. Now, they don't even go into churches to take up offers. They go and charge people to come hear them. Going to cost you $70 to come hear me. Then we're going to take up an offering. I, I, I can hear the doc, words of Dr. Roy Hicks in my ears. Uh, are you really that good? <laughs> one of his young four square ministers came to him one time. He said, Dr. Hicks, Dr. Hicks said, I can't get my church to grow. I can't do this. I get that. He said, son. And Dr. Hicks was a, a former general overseer of the four square churches uh, denomination. Knew Amy Simple McPherson. Okay. And um, he said, son, how long do you preach? He said, an hour and a half. He just looked at that young preacher and said, are you really that good? Because that's back in the day that you, you had to fill up both sides of a 90-minute cassette tape to be, really have a service. If you, could fill, if you could get into the second tape, Brother Bill, you remember, don't you? Yeah. If you got in, you got the 90 minutes and got, Pastor, we got into a second. Woo! We had us a church service this day. And then, then I, heard, I went to Raymond for an alumni, uh, alumni function, and Dr. Hicks, he shared the story. And I came back, oh, my God, are you really that good? Let's buy smaller tapes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> if, we fill up, if we fill up both sides of 45 minutes, okay. If we went into the second one, maybe we went for, for 50 minutes. Woo! We, we did cut back from 90 minutes to our tapes back then when we were recording on tape because uh, I just figured out I want that good. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're not, you're not good enough to get what God says a different way than what God says to do it. You're not going to get it another way. You, you can't, you can't. I, well, I'm, I was witnessing one guy a number, year, number of years ago. I was witnessing to him. He said, well, me and my maker have worked out a deal. Like, no, you hadn't. You don't, get, you don't get to work out deals. You know, God, it's not, it's not, it's not a bargaining thing getting saved. Yeah. What does the Bible say? Repent. Today is the day of salvation. If you'll harden not your heart as in the provocation. Now, there's no wiggle room there to negotiate. When's the day of salvation? Today. What do you have promise of? Nothing after t this very next second. If you're not born again, you have no promise of nothing. Well, the Lord's promised me I can live like I want to live, sin, drink, party, run around, crowds, do all this stuff, and when I'm 74, I'll get saved with my last breath. So you might die at 69 and go to hell and be in hell for five years by then. You don't have no promise. There's no negation. We have to do it God's way. So if God says it's this way, that's the way it is. And when God says, come to me, hear my sayings, and do them, then we are to come to him, we are to hear his sayings, and we are to do them. And he said that if we'll do that, we are blessed. He said, if we'll do that, we're blessed. If he said, we're blessed. what does Joshua 1 8 say? Every charismatic knows that one. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein how often? Day and night. Why? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, now wait a second now, for then. That means that if you haven't done what came before, for then, what it comes after is don't qualify. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. The for then means if you don't meditate in the book of the law day and night. What? That you may observe to do. Meditating and not doing is not enough. I mean, you got to meditate and do. So I got to meditate and do. You got to meditate and do. Then. And I like to add the Ed Taylor paraphrase version. And only then. Shall thou make thy way prosperous and have good success. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to be doers of the word. We're going to come to Jesus. We're going to hear what he has to say. And we're going to do so what? We can be blessed. See, when you live blessed, you live victorious. A blessed life is a victorious life. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, 
Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.